Hey, Jensen, Mark Malusis and Eddie's Coleman with you. Thanks for a couple minutes this afternoon. Mark, Eddie, I appreciate you taking the time. No problem. No, you got it. Uh, Jensen, let's start here because Eddie and I were talking about it earlier on in the show. We heard a little bit of a clarification. Uh, from your perspective, you like the way that Frank Kona set up this starting rotation for the series or no? Yeah, I, I think that's probably been question number one that uh, everybody <laughs> here has wondered. And I'll just take you to a year ago when Trevor Bauer started game one against the Boston Red Sox here. And, and I think a, a couple of things go into this, guys. If you remember Corey Kluver pitching into November last year, and, and many of his starts in the postseason came on short rest, they wanted to avoid that at all costs uh, early on. And the way it kind of set up here to be able to get it an extra day for him this first time around, and then he'd be on regular rest if it came to a possible Game 5. I think they felt pretty good about that. The other thing to think about, guys, is let's say, for instance, the Indians lose tonight. There's probably only one guy you want pitching a must-win game at that point. That would be Corey Kluber. And then let's say they win tonight. You've got your ace on the mound to possibly put you up two games to none heading into New York with Carlos Carrasco, who's arguably been the best road starting pitcher in the American League at 11-2. and two. Uh, we, We've kind of learned here in Cleveland uh, that the, the hashtag trust in Tito uh, <laughs> is what everybody's going on. So yeah. Uh, he's done it before. He got into the Game 7 of the World Series last year with probably half the pitching staff that we're seeing uh, on this, at least ALDS roster. So uh, if he feels that way, uh, we're buying into it, and uh, he'll look like a genius yet again if everything goes right. I think that's probably a good idea, Jensen. I've known Tito since Philadelphia when he wasn't a genius at that time, and he, <laughs> he laughs about that at the time, uh, too. But you know what? I'd, I'd, I'd go with him as well, too, because he, he's got a pretty good track record. You know, it, it's interesting. Moose and I were talking about this before. That uh, you know, with the way it was set up, it, it's almost it's kind of like a the bullpen is fully rested. Uh, you can't be any more rested than than this game here. You know, with Bauer, and you figure that Kluber and Carrasco, the next two, are probably going to go pretty deep the way they've been pitching. So you know, you can wheel out your guns here to help out Bauer if needed tonight. Yeah, and I think that's probably another way to look at this first game too, fellas. Uh, you mentioned the rest and. A couple of starters for the Indians, and Mike Clevenger and Danny Salazar will be in the bullpen for the postseason. Uh, with Clevenger, uh, I probably envision him being one of those first guys out if Bauer gets into a little bit of a jam uh, and facing the middle of the order type bats. I think Salazar probably projects a little bit more at the bottom of the order. Uh, if the situation dictates where you know uh, some of these guys will, will be more chase on the breaking ball, I think it's Clev. If you need some more velo for guys that can't catch up, it's probably Salazar. But an embarrassment of riches for Tito Francona to go to because you can probably get 6 to 12 outs with both of those guys. The other thing to think about, too, you know, Trevor doesn't have to go deep into this ball game. Uh, his longest postseason start, as we saw last year, was four and two-thirds when uh, the vaunted decision to bring in Andrew Miller in the fifth inning changed postseason baseball forever. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you really have a, a lengthy power laden bullpen that the Indians couldn't have last year. So I think by design, they want to try and limit the workload, not only on Kluber, but they want to limit the workload on Andrew Miller as much as possible because they know down the stretch here, they get where they want to be. They're going to lean on him for multiple innings at some point. Yeah, where is he health-wise, Jensen? Battled some injuries, the knee. Where is Miller here? All good, fellas, 100%. And more importantly, his playoff beard is in rare form. That's, really, that's, <laughs> that's really important, yeah. Was, <laughs> that's really what everybody was worried about right now. He, You know, guys, the past three or four performances and outings for him, uh, they had him on kind of a schedule. They wanted him to pitch back-to-back uh, -back days. They wanted him to go multiple innings to sit down and get up and, and really test that knee as much as possible. He had to field his position a couple of times. Pass with flying colors. Uh, the velocity back up uh, to 98 miles an hour. The slider, uh, exactly what you saw last year with him going into October. So I know Indians fans resting very comfortably uh, last night knowing he's ready and raring to go. Jensen Lewis is our guest. He is the Fox Indians analyst and has been Emmy winner as well, uh, former Indians pitcher. Uh, uh, back, uh, I think, uh, when was the last year you pitched, Jensen? It was a 2010, guys, but it's the 10th year anniversary of 07 when uh, it was the Yankees and our Indians. Uh, nice. and the, the infamous Midge game where Java Chamberlain was That's right. That's right. Great, That's, great wow. guys more ended up uh, stealing home on a wild pitch, and we ended up yeah. walking that off in the 10th inning. What, a, what an unbelievable postseason that was. And it's kind of eerie, guys, because you can go all the way back. Uh, a little nice nugget here in 1997, 
You'll remember Sandy Alomar Jr. hit the game-tying home run off Mariano Rivera yep. here in the eighth inning. The Indians end up walking it off in the ninth and winning the very next night in Game 5. So it's come in tens, as we've seen. 97 they won, 07 they won, and here we are yet again in 2017 with the Yankees and Indians matchup. Yep. I had a question for you, Jensen. It's getting ahead you know, uh, down to Game 4. I know Tomlin, he is slated in at, uh, at, at Game 4. Clevenger is a guy that you mentioned he'll pitch out of the pen, and he can be a long guy for you because I, I guess he did that at times during the season. But I, I know late in the season, he's, I think the last seven games he started, he – the Indians won all of them, and I think he pitched a few good ones in there, too, real good ones. Uh, was yeah. was there any thought with him uh, in that spot or not? Yeah, there was, and I, I think Tito wanted to have the ability to use Clev in multiple games because uh, of just the dominance he's had against right-handed hitters. And if you look at where the Yankees are uh, with Gary Sanchez and with Aaron Judge, if you get into a spot where you could use him on back-to-back nights or two out of three games, there, there's a real appeal to have him available for you much more so than just one start. I think also, too, when you have Bauer and Tomlin kind of bookending Corey Kluber and Carlos Carrasco, uh, you guys said off the top here, you envision those guys going uh, you know, five, six innings with no problem and then being able to cover Trevor Bauer or Josh Tomlin by not having them face a Yankee lineup a third time around the order in that single game. A lot of strategy that will go into this, and obviously game situation will dictate that. But Clev was considered. They talked about this, guys, probably through the middle of August and wanted Clev to be ready moving into September to be able to get his mind right and do his routine and get him set to where he was comfortable coming in from the bullpen. He was comfortable doing multiple innings. It's amazing how Tito has thought of so many different scenarios. And, heck, you go through last year uh, with the injuries they had to deal with, with Salazar and Carrasco, so undermanned. He's really built this up to, to as deep a bullpen I think we've seen, at least for a postseason team here in Cleveland. Jensen, I, I, it's, been a, it's been a long road to get back to where Cleveland wants to get back to, and that is the World Series. I mean, came so close to winning it last year against the Chicago Cubs. How about handling the moment, the expectations? You know, 42-8 and eight last 50 games, great team ERA, offense was there as well, clicking on all cylinders, separate yourself, yourself and the Astros from everybody else in the American League. Now are the moments at hand. Uh, the playoffs are upon us. What about this Tribe team handling this kind of moment with the expectations and the pressure on them? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and you allude to pressure. It's a complete 180 from last year where really no one in the country <laughs> gave the Indians a chance uh, against the Red Sox, and they end up sweeping Boston right out of, of the playoffs. This year, they will be the hunted. They're not going to sneak up on anybody. But, guys, uh, you've seen it plenty in, in New York teams of the past that have gone on to win World Series. There's a swagger. There's a confidence. There's a I'm better than you feeling every night out. And they've backed it up with their play. And I think it begins right at the top with Francisco Lindor and Jose Ramirez. you got two uh, MVP candidates who have really had spectacular seasons. Jose Ramirez has led the world in extra base hits. He's really solidified. I think this infield defense making the switch to second base, his original position uh, when he was drafted and brought up into the big leagues, it'll be, it'll be fascinating to see uh, how this Yankee pitching staff tries to pitch to the middle of this order. And then you can't really take a deep breath because the bottom of this order, too, has been so productive. And the likes of Carlos Santana, Lonnie Chisenhall, Giovanni Urshel is going to get the start at third base. He has been a defensive stalwart, almost a defensive closer coming into the late innings at third base. They've got a lot of weapons to beat you. Oh, by the way, Michael Brantley is going to be able to be available to pinch hit mm. in a given situation. He's Tito's just has so many toys to play with in this series, but you guys are right. Can they handle the pressure? I think it helps opening at home and having your home fans behind you and being able to possibly exploit a very young and inexperienced postseason lineup for the New York Yankees. Jensen Lewis, a Fox Indians analyst, our guest here on the fan, Ed Coleman, Mark Malusis, as we fill in for Mike today. Um, Jensen, uh, I, I cover the Mets. That's my problem, not yours. Hmm. Uh, but uh, I covered Jay Bruce for a long time this year. He went to Cleveland and just ripped it up uh, for you guys. I, I wanted to get your take on 
his contribution, how he fit in there, and uh, I guess maybe even down the line, I mean, he is going to be a free agent. You know, what uh, what thoughts are, are there for the Indians, too, with him? I, I would say there's already a campaign out, uh, maybe some GoFundMe pages yeah. to try and raise funds to get him back here. And listen, he, he's had a career year, uh, you know, 35, 36 home runs, over 100 RBIs. He's really, I, I think, at a time when the Indians needed – someone to come in and get the big hit he fit in this offense about as seamlessly as anybody could have and his demeanor uh you know having to deal with what happened uh in beaumont texas with the hurricane and and really thinking about his family uh, he raised over two hundred thousand dollars here uh along with cleveland indians charities to support those victims down in texas he not only is a great humanitarian but a great human as well uh, you don't go through this clubhouse without one guy just getting an instant smile when you mention his name. I feel like there'll be a great push from this front office to try and get him to come back here. Heck, you win a World Series title, it's pretty easy to say, you know what, I want to be a part of this again. I love this feeling. But, yeah, as far as being a middle-of-the-order bat that has continued to lengthen this lineup, great lineup protection for Edwin Encarnacion, uh, he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Jets, I know you mentioned there's, and there is. I mean, they've proven it out throughout the course of the year. A lot of depth to this Indians lineup. But if I asked you for a key going into this series against the Yankees, a positional player, everyday player that will be in the lineup, which guy are you leaning on or looking toward? Lindor? Yeah, you know what? I think it's probably 1A and 1B. I would say Ramirez and Encarnacion. In okay. the middle of this lineup will probably dictate because I think Lindor will end up getting his hits. He'll end up getting – you know, into scoring position on his own. And you guys know this as well as anybody. When you have this kind of shutdown pitching, especially late in both games, uh, you know, with both bullpens, hits with runners in scoring position will be very difficult to come by. But I think when you look at Ramirez, he's a guy that I think is either second or third hardest in the American League to strike out. That gives you a lot of confidence in those run scoring situations. If he's coming up, and especially with Edwin, how hot he's gotten down the stretch, those are my two key guys for the Indians if they're able to advance in this series. Yeah, Ramirez is one of those guys. I mean, it's just a phenomenal season that he has had. And Encarnacion is kind of funny. Here's a guy who's searching around trying to find a place to land in, in free agency. And, well, he landed in the right place. I think Cleveland's <laughs> glad he landed there, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the other thing to think about, too, guys, I wonder what the confidence is with Joe Girardi in this starting rotation. You guys saw what happened with Severino uh, in that wild card game. And for now, him to almost be banished to a possible fourth game, uh, that, that to me speaks volumes about where Joe Girardi's confidence is. You have CC Sabathia, my former teammate here, when we beat the Yankees in 2007. He'll get the start in game two. It kind of tells you where Girardi is feeling that – He's got to try and sneak a game out of here and then maybe get a great start from Tanaka in game three. Yeah, I mean, he's going to lean on that, Jensen. I mean, yeah. he's going to be aggressive with that bullpen. You saw he realized that Severino didn't have it the other night, got him out of there, and that bullpen is deep and strong. They get a lot of swings and misses, but Girardi is going to lean on that bullpen, very similar to what you see in Cleveland with Francona at times leaning on that bullpen, especially last year in the postseason, aside from Kluber starts. Yeah, and I think the other thing, too, guys, uh, I wonder what David Robertson's availability will be tonight. What what a heroic effort from him, uh, you know, three-plus innings at a time where the Yankees just needed to settle some things down. The other thing, a lot of people here, and they, and they don't know his name yet, but they will, Chad Green, my mm. goodness, it Great. is an absolute – it feels like a Tremendous. Nolan Ryan Express with mm. his fastball. Uh, it is so – it explodes so much in the last 15 to 20 feet. I love how he attacks guys. I think he is definitely – an X factor for the Yankees in that pen. Yeah, he's been a lifesaver for him, Jensen. You're right, and uh, yeah, actually, Girardi to me has a couple of questions on his hands. One, Severino that you brought up. The other is Dellen Batanzas, yeah. who you should see tonight. But there's questions there, and uh, I, I don't see any any re- or any way he can avoid being in this game tonight with with a couple of guys out of the pen right now. No question about it. And, and then with Chapman and his history here in this ballpark, uh, there. It's going to be uneasy because it is the postseason, but boy, it's going to be very augmented as far as the emotions go with guys that, yeah, they've got wipeout stuff when they're on, but when they don't, you can just see guys swim in their own heads a little bit, and that goes for both sides. There's going to be some interesting strategy into that sixth, seventh inning, and I still believe whoever has the lead 
going into the sixth inning is probably going to end up winning this series. Jensen, final one for me. Who's uh, who's LeBron going to be rooting for tonight? <laughs> you know what? I, I got to give a I got to give a, a little bit of a, an interesting shout out to the Yankees Twitter account for putting that up. Uh, it was a, it was a huge topic of conversation with us in the locker room once we saw that back in 07. Uh, I foresee him being in the uh, rally together red tonight uh, for, for the <laughs> Indians. I think I think he knows that uh, there will be no tolerance for any Yankee paraphernalia whatsoever. So I expect him to uh, to be right behind the Indians tonight. Jensen Lewis, Fox Indians analyst, Emmy winner. Hey Jensen, we appreciate the the time this afternoon. Enjoy the game tonight, all right, bud? Uh, okay, guys, you too. Thanks so much for having me. You got it. that nice, was a nice job by the Yankees tweeting out that yeah. picture of LeBron with the Yankee great. cap on. <laughs> it's <was> great. <laughs> Just Coming to your town, pal. There you go. Okay. Melissa and Coleman with you in for Mike right here, the fan in New York. Support for this podcast comes from U.S. Bank, proud to provide banking options for businesses. Go from is it possible to what's next. More information provided by local U.S. Bank small business specialists or at usbank.com slash quick loan. Subject to credit approval. Equal housing lender.